ladies and gentlemen, as we are about to begin shortly, please ensure your speakers and internet connection are fixed properly to avoid internet uh, to avoid interruptions uh, during our webinar. Additionally, throughout the webinar, we will be compiling questions or queries about our topics today. So to be answered in a Q&A session, uh, please type the question in a Q&A box at the right bottom corner of your screen. Please do note that this is different from the chat box. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Dear ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and speakers, professors, doctors and fellow colleagues. On behalf of the organizing committee members from the Visibility Team Faculty of Medicine, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you to the breakfast at FOM Live webinar series, episode 7 today. We really appreciate you taking one hour off, especially in your busy working day, to join our webinar today. I'm Dr. Suniza. I am honored to be MC today and will be chairing our webinar for today. Today's webinar is about CT Cancer Challenge Greater Petaling City and Implementation Framework for Cancer Control. As the virtual seminar considered as the new norm for us during COVID-19 outbreak, we hope that you will find our program lineup most engaging and insightful. And please note that you will be credited CPD point as usual uh, weekly CME after uh, your registration. City Cancer Challenge, or also known as CCAN, was launched by the Union International Cancer Control UICC at the 2017 World Economic Forum Annual Meeting in Davos. It was established as a standalone Swiss foundation in January 2019. This one hour webinar aims to provide Malaysian healthcare professionals with information on the City Cancer Challenge. As we can see from the agenda for today, this webinar offers five different interesting topics of discussion. We will be having seven speakers who are experts in their field to share their knowledge, ideas, or experience on the City Cancer Challenge. These are all our speakers for today. To officiate the event, it is a great honor that we invite upon a surgeon who is no stranger to surgical fraternity, whose work and contribution have expanded the, to the field of breast surgery over the years. Please join us welcoming Professor Dr. Noor Aisha Muhammad Taib, a director, University of Malaya Cancer Research Institute, and who is a senior consultant breast surgeon, Department of Surgery, University of Malaya, to grace us with her welcoming and opening speech. Please welcome Prof. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome and thank all of you, the panelists, as well as the participants in uh, having uh, to come join us this morning. Um, and of course, we would like to thank our breast breakfast at FOM team behind the scenes, Dr. Shams and team, for allowing us to bring City Cancer Greater Petaling City onto this platform today. Um, the journey of us has been uh, since the World Cancer Congress that was held in uh, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia in 2018. And now I think together with the City Cancer Foundation, MOH, CSOs, that are involved are tirelessly trying to bring CCAN to our shores. So when looking for an evidence-based cancer control implementation framework, I think CT Cancer uh, Challenge came as a massive opportunity for us to bring together all stakeholders to improve the equitable access to quality cancer care in Greater Petaling. So without further ado, I think we should welcome all our panelists who will be today uh, presenting to you uh, what City Cancer Challenge is all about and how you as an individual or as a group 
could actually join this team to bring better equitable access to quality cancer care in Malaysia. Okay. All right. So with that, I'll pass it back to Dr. Suniza um, to continue the day today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Aisha, for such inspiring speech. So next, we go to the first, uh, our speaker. CCAN leads a city partners, partnership in initiative that aims to improve access to quality care, can care in cities around the world, transforming the stakeholder from the public and private sectors collectively in design, plan and implement cancer solutions. To know further details in cancer ch City Cancer Challenge, it gives us a great pleasure to invite our first speaker for today, Ms. Rebecca Morton Doherty, to deliver her talk on introduction to the City Cancer Challenge Foundation. Ms. Rebecca is a Director, Policy and Global Impact, City Cancer Challenge Foundation, Geneva, Switzerland. She is not able to join us due to the time difference between Geneva and Malaysia. However, we will have the present a pre-recording video from her talk. Ms. Rebecca joining the City Cancer Challenge Foundation team in 2017. She has been lead, leading work to ensure that CCAN generates, uses and shares quality evidence of what works to, continuous, to continuously improve and scale impact. This includes the foundation's monitoring, evaluation and organizational learning functions, as well as data and evidence generation to guide policy development for quality can care, cancer care. Rebecca has spent over 15 years in the international non-profit sector based in uh, London, Brazil and Geneva with a focus on program development and policy change in, in the global health and development fields. She has a Bachelor in Political Science from the University of Warwick and Master of Science, Gender and Development from the London School of Economics. Please welcome Ms. Rebecca. Good morning. My name is Rebecca Morton Doherty. I'm the Director of Policy and Global Impact at the City Cancer Challenge Foundation. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to address you this morning and share a little bit more about City Cancer Challenge, who we are, what we do and what we're hoping to achieve by working closely with the city of Greater Petaling. So City Cancer Challenge Foundation was first established in 2017 as an initiative of the Union for International Cancer Control. Um, we then transitioned in 2019 to an independent foundation based in Geneva, Switzerland. Our vision is for a world with quality and equitable cancer care for all. And to achieve that mission, um, what we do is support cities around the world as they work to improve access to equitable and quality cancer care. So we're currently working in nine cities across Africa, Asia, Latin America and Europe. And as you can see in the region at the moment, we have Yangon in Myanmar um, and now we're delighted to welcome Greater Petaling um, as well. So that reach of nine cities translates to a population of just over 43 million um, that we are impacting through our activities at the city level. Um, but I think it's important to mention that City Cancer Challenge is more than just the cities that we work with. We're also a community of partners and we're very lucky to have among that group a number of UN agencies, professional associations, civil society, academia, um, and many other experts um, across the cancer care continuum with whom we work. I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking to you about the City Cancer Challenge model and what it is that we actually do with the city and how that would translate to the greater petaling context. Um, so what you have here is a visual of our model um, and the first step in a city's journey with City Cancer Challenge is what we call due diligence. And that's really due diligence on both sides. And that's really about understanding what value um, City Cancer Challenge can bring to a city. And is there a readiness in the city to embrace what is an innovative and sometimes challenging way of approaching health systems challenges? Um, I was lucky enough to visit Greater Petaling um, on a couple of occasions and myself and the whole team have been struck at the high level of commitment 
um, at all levels to improving access to quality cancer care. So once the city um, is officially welcomed and has joined City Cancer Challenge, the next step for us is what we call stakeholder engagement. And that's really about identifying who are the key decision makers and influencers in the planning and delivery of cancer care in a city. Um, and we bring together that group of decision makers in what we call the City Executive Committee. And they are really critical in driving the process in the city, providing guidance, um, but also really key to the sustainability of any of the activities that are launched as part of the City Cancer Challenge. So the next stage then is what we call the needs assessment. Um, and this is where we would work both with the city executive committee, but also a group of technical experts in the city to coordinate the collection of data from all of the cancer care institutions in a city so that we can start to paint a picture of the city's capacity to deliver cancer care. So as part of this data collection process, we're looking at infrastructure, equipment, healthcare workforce, and the quality of care that's delivered to try and establish where are the key bottlenecks and gaps in the city, and what are the priority areas that, as a group, um, the city wants to address. And once we've identified those priorities, the next step is to develop a series of eight to 12 projects um, that look at addressing those gaps. Um, and what City Cancer Challenge will do is help to um, develop those project plans so that they are feasible, measurable um, and impactful. So the way that we do that is we have a couple of core principles. Um, so the first is that we want to be able to build on existing knowledge and expertise and we want to be able to leverage that. And where it's necessary, CCAN will then bring in this roster of experts to provide additional expertise um, and to provide um, additional support from our partners. So this is some examples of the types of projects that have emerged. Now, whilst every city context is unique, we've seen across the seven cities already that there are some common trends emerging and some common challenges. Um, for example, um, a lack of multidisciplinary team decision-making, um, a lack of standardized care and guidelines for some of the most invasive cancers, um, a lack of opportunities for professional um, training and education, particularly in some of the key cancer subspecialties. Um, you know, there are challenges also in access um, to care uh, due to challenges with patient navigation, the referral systems um, and patient awareness um, and education as well. Um, and these are some of the types of projects um, that City Cancer Challenge has been working on. Um, so you can see the development of quality assurance programs, um, palliative care training, um, the development of radiotherapy plans. And this is really a highlight of some of those key areas. But what does that actually mean in practice? What does success look like um, for the City Cancer Challenge? And as I said, that will, that will depend city to city and we will work with the city to identify your core objectives and targets and goals. Um, but I want to share two quick examples from Cali in Colombia, uh, where there was a key need identified in pathology. Um, city Cancer Challenge responded to that by supporting the organisation of a series of workshops in pathology with a number of labs from across the city um, that resulted in the development of a new set of guidelines and standards uh, for pathology. Um, in parallel, the university hospital increased human resources for pathology and what we've seen between 2018 and 19 is a significant increase um, in, the, in the number of histopathology tests carried out, which is a critical part um, of cancer diagnosis. And then in Yangon, we have an example of radiotherapy being identified as a, an acute need. Um, and here again, City Cancer Challenge leveraged a partnership with the IAEA um, to organize a series of international consultation workshops, again with local experts and bringing in um, IAEA designated experts to work together on a radiotherapy plan, uh, which has since been approved by the Ministry of Health. Um, and then again, with CCAN support, we've been able to explore the case for investment in that plan um, with a potential to impact over 25 million people um, living in the public hospital catchment area, um, which is concerned by this plan. 
So those are a couple of examples. Um, and the type of support that CCAN offers really varies, um, you know, whether it's leveraging our partners, whether it's direct support for a project, whether it's supporting local fundraising efforts, um, whether it's bringing in additional resources, but what's common to all those types of support that CCAN offers across the projects is a lens of sustainability. So everything we do, we want to ensure that it is sustainable for the future. And that's why it's so important to have the engagement um, of this group that's here today at all levels. Um, and we're very much looking forward to beginning this journey um, with the city and welcoming you to a broader community where we know that you will have a lot to offer in terms of knowledge and expertise, but also the opportunity to learn from this growing community of cities and partners. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Rebecca, for such a lovely and excellent introduction on CCAN early on. So, next topic is our city ready to take up the challenge to improve access to quality cancer the answer is yes greater petaling is the second city in asia to join ccan where the decisions comes one year after malaysia hosted world cancer congress in 2018. without further ado please welcome miss norlin ghazali who is a city manager, Greater Petaling Jaya, Malaysia, to share the Malaysian experience in City Cancer Challenge. Ms. Nolin worked previously under UMCRI as a centre manager in 2011, and she moved to Dean's office as a corporate and international partnership manager. Then she worked as a corporate licensed for Unity Malaya in Deputy Vice Chancellor office. And now she is a city manager creator Petaling Jaya in a CCAN. Please welcome Ms. Nolin. Everyone. Uh, I'm Nolin Ghazali, a city manager for Greater Petaling. I'll share my screen right now, yeah. Um in uh, in two zero 18 uh, in uh, proposal was made uh, by UM and uh, National Cancer Society to City Cancer Challenge, and um, and the uh, the engagement was was uh, supported by uh, Selangor Health Exco as well as the Ministry of Health Malaysia. Now. Uh, participation was also supported by the Chief Minister's Office of Selangor, Director General of Ministry of Health, Director of Health Selangor, uh, Director of uh, NCI, President of uh, MOS, and also President of Association of Private uh, Hospitals Malaysia. Now, the timeline that uh, have been done is that application was done in December 2018. Um, uh, due diligence was done and acceptance by City Cancer Challenge was uh, in September 2019. And appointment of uh, uh, City Manager was done in April 2020. Uh, activities that we've done in 2020 is that uh, we have engaged with the professional bodies like uh, MOH, MOS, College of Surgeons, uh, College of Pathology, radiotherapy, oncologists, medic, uh, medical physicists. Uh, at the same time as well, for the six month in uh, 2020, uh, we've done uh, interactive second project TeleEcho, which we engage medical societies, nursing departments, medical physicists, palliative care specialists, and all uh, the, uh, surgeons. Uh, besides that, we have engaged with the NGOs, uh, namely Hospice Malaysia and also TAC. Hmm. Now, uh, the Malaysian journey, uh, I, I'll just uh, breeze through um, six things that we have done. Uh, due diligence, uh, there was a grant given by IAEA and I, uh, Islamic, uh, Islamic Development Bank. The status of MOU, our meeting with MTES, the engagement of the three councils, for Greater Petaling and also the Chief, uh, sorry, City Executive Committee and Technical Committee. 
Now, during a uh, second due diligence visit, uh, the team has visited um, Ministry of Health in for Subang Jaya and Medical Center and Petaling Jaya. Uh, it was hosted by Datuk Sri Dr. Muhammad Yusof Haji Abdul Wahab. Secondly, we went to University of Malaya Medical Center and uh, it was hosted by uh, the former VC as well as the former director of UMMC, uh, Prof. Tunku Kamarul. Um, and for National Cancer Society, the, it was hosted by the MD, uh, Dr. Murali. The visit was uh, done also to Subang Jaya Medical Center, hosted by Dr. Martin Melo. Continued to host, uh, Kasih Hospice uh, Society, hosted by Catherine Oi. And last but not least, to the Selangor State Government Headquarters, hosted by the Selangor State Exco Health, uh, YB Dr. Siti Maria Mahmud. Now, Subsequently to that, the letter of intent was signed by uh, Dr. YB Dr. Siti Maria uh, to for, for for City Cancer Challenge. Besides that, as I mentioned just now, Greater Petaling receives an award by IAEA as well as uh, ISDB Islamic Development Bank. And the announcement was made in uh, September 2020. This will help the multidisciplinary teams in uh, Greater Petaling at, for the uh, Women Cancers Partnership. Now, for the MOU status update, um, it was delayed from the early 2020 due to several uh, reasons, uh, the COVID-19 situations, as well as the um, uh, MCO changes of signatories, changes of types of MOUs, and also changes of departments. However, uh, we are under good progress. Uh, now the sectoral section of UPEN will be in charge of City Cancer Project, and uh, it will be streamlined under the community projects. We'll be conducting uh, a meeting with them tomorrow, actually, uh, and hopefully we will be able to sign the MOU soon. Now, this Concurrently, we did uh, a presentation with the MTES. Uh, it was uh, chaired by Chief, Chief uh, Minister of Selangor. And the result was that City Cancer Challenge Project was approved unanimously. And uh, uh, MBSA will be included in the Greater Petaling besides uh, MBPJ and MPSJ. Now, the as mentioned by Rebecca earlier, there will be a chief executive committee. It, it, what we've done is that we emulate what uh, they have already, uh, City Cancer Challenge um, template. These are the uh, people that we'll be engaging with. 88% uh, have already confirmed. And um, hopefully uh, by MOU is assigned, everyone will be on board. Besides that, the uh, CEC will be supported by the technical committees, uh, which is grouped into four categories, which is management of oncology care services, basic oncology services, quality care, as well as community access comprehensive care. Uh, with that, uh, I, uh, I uh, pass over to Dr. Suniza. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nolin, for such a valuable uh, experience from Malaysia uh, with the CCAN. So next, um, Malaysia is an upper middle income country with the building blocks of health system firmly in place. But the gaps still exist in terms of access to timely diagnosis care and care with relatively low cancer survival low cancer survival rates compared to other upper middle income countries. We hope through City Cancer Challenge, it provides better solution in terms of early diagnosis and treatment, which will finally result in better patient outcomes. Next, we'd like to welcome Dr. Faisal Izwan Mustafa, who is a consultant 
Public Health Physician and Deputy Directors NCD's Disease Control Division, Ministry of Health Malaysia, to highlight on the Ministry of Health role in City Cancer Challenge. Dr. Faisal is a consultant public health physician, best known for his leadership in prevention, prevention and control of non-communicable disease in Malaysia. His special interest areas of uh, include diabetes, cardiovascular uh, cancers, and obesity. At the Ministry of Health, he is the Deputy Director and Cities at the Disease Control Division and his main roles include policy and program development and strategic implementation of interventions for the prevention and controls of NCDs. In addition, Dr. Faisal has special interest in leveraging on technology in catalyzing behavioral modification to reduce the exposure to NCD risk factors. Please welcome Dr. Faisal. Right, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Suniza. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, very good morning. Um, I don't have a slide to share. Um, I would like um, to make several key points uh, relating um, to the discussion um, that we have um, this morning. So firstly, uh, let me introduce you about Disease Control Division. Uh, we are a division under the Public Health Program at the Minister of Health in Putrajaya. The head of the program is the currently the Deputy Director General of Public Health, Dr. Dr. Chong Chi Kiong, and the Director for Disease Control is Dr. Dr. Nur Hayati Rusli, whom you would have seen often during the press conference for the COVID-19. Um, under the Disease Control, Disease Control Division mainly deals with policy and program development with a specific function right now um, for responding to any emergency of public health importance, uh, which you are seeing right now with COVID-19. Um, NCD, non-communicable disease, uh, is a section under the Disease Control Division. And specific for our function, uh, we look at all the main NCDs, including cancer. Um, however, when it comes to cancer, uh, the planning and also implementation cuts across several divisions um, for primary care that would be under the Family Health Development Division. Uh, we work closely as well with the Medical Development Division, the Oncology Services, and also the uh, National Cancer Institute. The work that we do uh, within ministry in the field of NCDs is governed mainly uh, through the National Strategic Plan for Non-Communicable Diseases. I've got a copy here for those of you interested. Um, and specific for the cancer program, we have the document which is called the National Strategic Plan for the Cancer Control Program. Um, the last, um, so right now we will be soon publishing the latest version for the year 2021 to the year 2025. The document is already ready. It's just a matter of getting it approved uh, by the various um, uh, committees within the ministry. The other thing I would like to highlight about our work with cancer is the National Cancer Registry, the um, MNCR. It was initiated way back in 1993 as a pilot project in Pulau Pinang. Since then, it has um, expanded uh, to become nationwide in 2007. And through several changes right now, the Cancer Registry is under the per direct responsibility of the um, IKN, of the uh, National Cancer Institute. Um, I've mentioned that the work for cancer cuts across several divisions within the ministry. It also cuts across other stakeholders outside of the ministry. Um, we have strong involvement uh, with civil society and you can see this is one platform that we are collaborating with the civil society, the CCAN, um, that includes NGOs and that also includes professional associations. Uh, we also work closely with academia, academics. Again, this is another example working with the University of Malaya. Um, so you have academia, both from the public and the private academia, from private universities as well, and also with the private sector, uh, not only from the private healthcare sector, but also from pharmaceutical companies and research organizations. So I mentioned about multi-sectoral, and I think this is a segue for me 
to talk about the CCAN or the CT cancer challenge. Um, why are we supporting um, this initiative? Firstly, I would say because the objectives are very much aligned to these objectives and strategies of the NSP CCP, National Strategic Plan for Cancer Control Program. Secondly, they are trusted partners. Uh, it makes collaborating easier when you know who your collaborators are and your collaborators have good trusted reputation. You know, it's easy to work with people that you trust. Thirdly, the solutions that is being proposed takes a broader approach to cancer, not just looking at it from the disease perspective. You know, a, a patient who lives with cancer is not just living with the cancer. There are other social economic consequences of living with cancers. And CCAN has the potential to look at the broader issues surrounding a patient, not just looking at the medical aspect of that patient. And, um, and the fourth point is that CCAN brings in the community and the local authorities into the picture. We always talk about the social determinants of health and CCAN is able to address the other aspects, not just the disease aspect, but also the other social aspect of a patient living with cancer. And lastly, as mentioned by Rebecca in her video, the partners also bring in their expertise and experiences from the other project that is being run in other parts of the world. And last, my last set of points is what does success look to us? I know CCAN in Malaysia have its own specific objectives and Rebecca did mention about what does success look for CCAN? What does success look to us within ministry? Firstly, when we have a more empowered local community. When I say local community, it doesn't just mean that individual in the community, that also includes the civil society within the community, um, community organizations, local authorities. That means people in, in either at individual or in a organizational level takes more responsibility for their health. So that's one. Second, we hope that CCAN provides an impetus um, for a intervention that looks at the system as a whole, the community as a whole, not just breaking it up into small pieces and managing it separately. And what, you know, right now we talk about cancer, but it is easy when you have an empowered community to extend beyond cancer, looking at other related health issues. Thirdly, we what success means to us is that the CCAN in Greater Pataling will become the exemplar, you know, the place where others would learn. And lastly, what the success looks to us is when we could expand this initiative to other cities and big towns throughout Malaysia. And with that, um, I'll end my talk. Thank you very much. I'll pass back to you, Suniza. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Faisal, for such excellent and interesting talk. We hope, we hope that CCAN effort to bring together health and non-health sector to develop innovative localized solution for cancer to tackle the growing burden of cancer. So we are happy to inform that Dr. Ong is able to join us today. Uh, Dr. Ong is a uh, regional director of Malaysia uh, of Asia CCAN, City Cancer Challenge, based in Yangon. He was a Yangon City Manager of CCAN until December 2018 and coordinated all the Yangon City activities with CCAN Global Team of UICC. Hi, Dr. Ong. Can you hear us? I think there is a technical issue in the Dr. Ong's um, side. So maybe we can move on with an, our next uh, discussion. Moving on, we would like to call upon our next speaker, Prof. Noor Aisha, again to deliver her talk on the civil society organization's roles of the University of Malaya. Prof. Aisha's is an expertise, a deep knowledge of cancer health system in Malaysia and breast cancer survivorship. She has a very important role as the lead collaborator with National Cancer Society of Malaysia 
in the bid for the Greater Petaling City Cancer City Challenge in the state of Selangor, Malaysia. She is the principal investigator, investigator for a few studies, namely Malaysian Breast Cancer Survivorship Cohort Study, which have been published many publications under this study. She has been appointed as the director of the University of Malaya Cancer Research Institute in 2019 until present to enhance collaboration and impactful cancer research in UM. She will highlight us on the next topic of discussion on the civil society organizations' roles of the University of Malaya. Please welcome Prof. Aisha. Good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Suniza. So I'm just going to spend a very short time uh, maybe detailing a little bit about the role of us in the academia in the City Cancer Challenge. So I will just talk a little bit about the UM impact research and how we play a role in the CCAN process. So I think civil society, I think I'm glad to hear what Dr. Faisal was talking about, the broader sense of how we can bring people together to actually come up with a collective action to actually improve the cancer quality as well as access to our uh, society in Malaysia. So I think in that sense, uh, the university and uh, academics also feel that they are part of the civil society. Civil society should not be uh, defined very strictly. In fact, um, people always find that there is no one civil society view. That means the civil society actors, they need to contend with similar issues with uh, people from all different uh, uh, organizations. So in 2018, Faculty of Medicine University Malaya became a UICC member. So I think Dr. Suniza mentioned a little bit about UICC. So UICC is the Union for International Cancer Control. Um, it's based in Geneva and it has a platform uh, in the World Health Assembly. So they actually play a global role in cancer control. So I think in University of Malaya, I think back in 2019, the impact-oriented research has been uh, one of the driving forces behind uh, ensuring academics remain relevant to their society and to provide research that impact beyond academia and making sure that people who are interested in ensuring this type of research is being brought forward, bring together the stakeholders as well as the research beneficiaries right from the stage of the project ideation itself. Um, so this type of value of interaction between the researchers from interdisciplinary or various disciplines um, are, are very important to bring about a real world change to real world issues that affect our own communities. So I think in uh, University of Malaya, there are several projects that, that I'm involved and also my colleagues are involved. So one of them is the Rebong. Um, this is one of the, uh, we are trying to develop an expedited diagnostic pathway tool to reduce cancer early diagnosis barriers in the urban B40 group in Selangor. So I don't, I won't be able to go into too much details, but um, given that we are calling it rebong, so we are actually targeting the shoots. In Malay, we call it kalau hendak melentur bulu, biar dari rebongnya. That means we try to understand the community first by studying the community. So we are looking into the health systems that um, is in the pathway of diagnosis. And we are looking at the social, cultural, as well as religious issues as well as how people communicate to, to then come up with an intervention. So this Rebong is actually a sister project that will be coinciding with the City Cancer Challenge process. So we have had many engagements in the last year and we have also uh, coming up with two Rebong training programs for the community workers as well as GPs to focus on knowledge of cancer, the four top cancers which is breast, colorectal, lung as well as cervical cancer. So if you want any more details, you can contact me directly. My email will be at the end. The other projects that we are very keen in is the UMMC quality improvement projects in relation to cancer. So the first one, I think as what Dr. Faisal mentioned earlier, having data is very important for national cancer control. So we at UMMC, uh, we are very fortunate because we have a homegrown electronic medical records platform which we can actually um, change and adapt as we go along. 
So we have been communicating and collaborating with Institute Cancer Negara as well as Pusat Informasi Kesihatan uh, Ministry of Health to come up with our institutional cancer registry that can be reported directly to the uh, National Cancer Register. So this is a work in progress and we hope to go live. That means collecting data from PPUM from July this year and forwarding it on to uh, Ministry of Health by January next year. So these are the processes that we have gone through. And I have to say, working in UMMC, we have 20 different departments and units managing cancer patients. And I can imagine having to organize something like uh, the registry is, as you can see, can be complicated, but can be do can be doable. So we are we are in the process of adapting and customizing our EMR. So the next project that we are doing in UMMC is to improve the quality of life of breast cancer patients in the survivorship period. So this is also um, uh, funded by Impact Research Grant UM, um, where we are looking at early recovery uh, after surgery or the ERAS protocol in breast cancer and we're looking at also the exploration of needs of patients and health systems in implementing a breast cancer survivorship care plan in the in Malaysia okay and the last project is journey is actually developing and pilot testing a journey uh, patient journey navigation apps to guide patients who are high risk of having cancer through a, their diagnostic process in our hospital so there are many objectives and uh, difficult to mention here, but uh, besides this project, we also have projects from the pediatric groups, from the oral health group. So there are many quality improvement projects that we are doing uh, with related to cancer survivorship. So this one, I just thought I would flash this. Prof Nirmala is looking into the needs of cancer patients and she's actually interviewed more than 600 over uh, cancer survivors in the community to come up with a questionnaire that we will then be able to assess nationally what the issues are with our cancer survivors. So yeah, so I think this uh, health system needs assessment questionnaire that we're developing is slowly going uh, through Delphi processes because of the COVID, we have to change the research methods a little bit. And in the end, what we expect to find in the end of the research is a needs assessment questionnaire for survivorship care in Malaysia, public hospital setting. Okay, and hopefully by knowing, and again, I think we have to learn from all our global partners, having data will help to improve the care in our country. So I'll just flash an uh, acknowledgement slide. There are many people involved in all this project, so thank you very much. But I think the most important thing I think we would like to bring forward today is again about the CT Cancer Challenge. We know that the processes have been um, detailed by Rebecca as well as Nolin earlier. And you know that the strategic priorities here is number one, improve quality of cancer infrastructure, which I think in Malaysia, we're not too bad. Um, and also enhancing capacity of health professionals, also maybe not too bad. We want to develop sustainable financing mechanisms. This is something that we would really like to see how we can uh, use the city cancer model to improve or develop the sustainable financing mechanisms. And of course, connecting and activating stakeholders as what um, Dr. Pesel mentioned earlier, the broader, the broader view of cancer and all the different stakeholders that may be involved in cancer care. And lastly, we must be able to have data to drive the solutions. So the process of City Cancer Challenge, the model that was shared before, where we learn, empower and grow over a period of two years. The main key point here, I think at this level, at this stage of where we are with City Cancer Challenge is to understand in year one, we need to do the needs assessment where we need to get this data to drive the solutions later. So we have obtained the National Medical Research Register Ethics Approval in December uh, 2020, where we are going to come out to survey hospitals in the Klang Valley to understand what is going on with uh, cancer care in the Klang Valley. I think many people will ask, why did you choose, you know, Greater Petaling in Selangor, the most probably um, high income state and all that. But I think if we can sort out our high capacity areas, we can definitely provide more care to the low capacity areas and also provide better support to the low capacity areas. So the last slide that I have really is because to improve the quality of cancer capacity among the health professionals, 
is really by listening to you. I think the people who are listening in, some of you may be um, academics, some of you may be professionals. What we really need is to populate our technical committee with interested people, with experts, because in order to get this to work, we need you to come on board. So I have left uh, uh, Miss Norlin's contact. Please contact her, um, our city manager, if you're interested to be part of the team. Thank you very much. That was my last slide. Thank, Thank you, you very Dr. much. Siniza. Thank you very much, Prof. Aisha, uh, for such an excellent talk. Um, to all participants, you, uh, participant, you have any question, please type in a Q&A box. Um, and then uh, please note that this is different from the chat box. So next. Uh, hello, Dr. Suniza. Can you hear me? Hi, Dr. Hi, Ong. Dr. Yes, Ong. you managed to get the uh, internet. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I was listening throughout the session and I was joining over the phone. That's why uh, I cannot like uh, fully contribute and I'm very sorry for that apology. It's and, okay, yeah. Dr. Ong. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you will join us. I in just want to introduce you. Right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next. Yes, next. Uh, I'm all. Yeah, and uh, I'm the regional director for the Asia for the City Cancer Challenge Foundation, as Dr. Suniza has mentioned earlier. And I based in Yangon in Myanmar, and uh, Yangon is one of the first key learning cities. So we've been experiencing with the CCAN for three years. And uh, also learning from the other different city, like a city to city, they change support from the Cali from Colombia and essentially from Paraguay. So um, I, I hope like I can guide through in the second process and especially like uh, expanding about the second process and initiative in the ASEAN region. And thank you. Actually, the presentation from both uh, Rebecca and Nolan is uh, quite comprehensive and complete for second as well as for the, our progress in the Greater Battalion in Malaysia. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Ong, for such a brief introduction of yourself. Thank you very much for joining us as well. So now next, let us welcome our last speaker before the Q&A session, uh, Dr. Murali Darin Munusami, to talk about the CSO role of the National Cancer Society Malaysia. Dr. Murali Munusami is a public health physician, completed his PhD, in public health at the College of Public Health Science, Chulalongkorn University, Thailand, under an Asian Economic Community Scholarship. Dr. Murali was awarded the prestigious Chivening Scholarship in 2015 by the UK Foreign and Commonwealth Office and completed a term as a fellow in health policy, planning and financing at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and the London School of Economics and Political Science, which is a two of the top world's university. Dr. Murali is currently the director of the National Cancer Society and was selected one of the world's young cancer leaders of, for 2019-2020 by the UICC, the world's largest grouping of, of organisations working in cancer. He is also a fortnightly health columnist in Free Malaysia Today. Please welcome Dr. Morali. Please welcome Dr. Morali for the next um, presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chairman, for the very kind introduction. A very good morning, uh, professors, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I'm just going to make this as brief uh, as possible. So I'm not going to put up slides as well so that we can take more questions, hopefully. And uh, really, um, I'm here to, to share with you all about um, four things about why CSOs uh, are involved in the entire CCAN process. And um, one is uh, what can we bring? What do we bring to the picture? I think uh, one of the things that uh, Dr. Faisal and uh, Prof. Aisha and I think Rebecca has kind of highlighted during the entire process today is how management of NCDs, especially cancer, is a very multi-sectoral, uh, uh, multifaceted uh, thing. We need not only the kind of clinical approaches, the treatment, the therapeutics, the diagnostics, but we also need a whole lot of other uh, kind of um, sectors in place to address the financial needs, the social needs, and uh, the various issues which form barriers for cancer patients to actually start on their treatment journey and complete the treatment journey. And this is really where CSOs come into the picture. Um, in Malaysia, as in many other 
countries around the world, a lot of CSOs work in areas very related to these gaps, the shortages, the barriers that many patients face in their disease uh, journey. And this is especially true of cancer patients as well. Unfortunately, um, a lot of um, uh, CSOs work in isolation. We work separately. For example, women's NGOs don't really work hand in hand with health NGOs or they are uh, economic uh, NGOs which uh, work at uh, po poverty alleviation or even food supply, but they, they don't really talk to uh, the health NGOs. So the whole idea of why CSOs are involved in the CCAN process is so that one, we can also learn how to harmonize in working together uh, in the sense that so that CSOs can actually align uh, our clients' needs against our own needs and be able to serve our clients better. And two, it's so that CSOs um, as, a, as a whole and not only across the health sector can learn to work hand in hand with government, with local government, with the Ministry of Health, and especially with a tertiary institution such as University of Malaya, which really is the kind of big uh, umbrella treating organization for cancer in, in the Greater Pataling District. Um, having said that, we are hoping, what are we hoping to get out of this? We are hoping to have a framework and also a kind of blueprint so that we can duplicate the efforts, the learnings, the strategies from this entire process of bringing all the stakeholders together in the city of Petaling, and then we can take it to other cities uh, across Malaysia, in fact, even across Southeast Asia, so that we can do this better for all the people that we serve. Um, and, and with that, I'm, I'm actually going to conclude so that we can take a lot more questions. Thank you very much. And of course, again, really a pleasure and an honor to be working alongside the University of Malaya and the Ministry of Health Malaysia in making this happen uh, for the people of Greater Petali. Thank you very much, Dr. Morales, for such a very interesting talk. Uh, so before we start for the Q&A session, um, I would like to introduce another two more uh, speakers who will be joining us for the Q&A session. Uh, first is Dr. Noor Saliha Ibrahim Tamin. She is the Public Health Physician and Head of Cancer Control Unit, NCD Section, Ministry of Health. She is responsible for the development of policies, planning and strategies related to cancer control, especially in the area of prevention, screening and early detection. As the officer in charge of cancer control at the ministry, working closely with the other agencies and NGOs involved in the program is a necessity. She is also a subject matter expert for the cancer registration, a, a program implemented at the national and the state level. The next one is, uh, please welcome Mr. Uh, Kenneth Lo Kianyong, who is the Assistant Manager of the National Cancer Society of Malaysia, NCSM, under the Health Education Literacy Pro Promotion and Policy, HELPP Department. He designs and leads a few of the team's signature program that aims at improving, at improving health literacy, enhancing access to health and cancer screening. And he, he has been actively participating in scientific research and advocacy develops healthcare policies focused on the health issue and non-communicable disease and CDs, including cancer. For next, for the Q&A session, I would like to pass this platform to Prof. Aisha to initiate and continue the Q&A session. Please welcome Prof. Thank you, uh, Dr. Suniza. I think uh, we've left the Q&A box. Uh, we have a question. Is there a unifying body for all CSOs in the country? So I think maybe we leave Dr. Murali to uh, answer this question. Dr. Murali, uh, sure, are you there? Prof. Yeah, sure, Prof. Yes, ah. uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, Dr. Yu, I think really, uh, so um, I, there is no unifying body for all CSOs. And I think one of the nature of the CSOs, as Prof. Aisha was saying, is the fact that they're so diverse and uh, so multi-sectoral, there's, there's, there's no real framework to be able to kind of tie them all together, which is all the more why we need uh, this kind of uh, cooperation uh, strategies. 
Um, are all CSOs registered officially? By right, they should be. All CSOs should be registered under the Registrar of Societies officially within the country, and then they have uh, accountability and uh, uh, reporting frameworks to the, the respective government departments. So that is a must. And I think in terms of the engaging engagements, we are also working with uh, officially registered uh, societies rather than any fly-by-night operations. Yeah, Professor, I if I could, I could just add to that. Yeah. I think if you want to draw parallel to HIV AIDS uh, with the Majlis AIDS Kebangsaan, uh, I, I suppose one of the challenges would be cancer is not just one disease, whereas HIV is just one disease. Um, but there are arguments to have a unifying um, body. Uh, it makes you stronger. Uh, it makes um, funding in a way easier if you look at the um, HIV AIDS model. But then again, if you look at the other NCDs, and I look at the other NCDs, you know, I envy the cancer group. Uh, we don't have strong civil society for diabetes for cardiovascular disease, for heart failure, you know, heart failure, by, by the way, have worse prognosis and a lot of cancers, but of course, you know, heart failure doesn't talk at your heart, you know. Um, uh, but anyway, there are many issues out there. Um, we need to start somewhere and cancer um, does seem to be a good um, way, avenue to start the conversation going because there's a lot of champions, you know, people, celebrities like to associate themselves with cancer. For me, cancer is more sexy than diabetes, lah, than heart disease and hypertension. Hypertension uh, that's sexy. Lah. Uh, cancer is certainly more attractive um, for you to do advocacy work. Uh, and um, and that, like I said, that's one of the reasons why um, uh, MOH would like to participate and why success looks to me in terms of being the entry point for other um, NCD related work. Uh, back to you, Aisha. Yes, and I think we've heard about the what we see as success for the City Cancer Challenge. So maybe we go around the table now, you know, because I think um, for me, from the academic and also from the provider perspective, because we are also a hospital and also in the academic side, I think we want to see quality care. You know, I think quality care would be the key to actually having uh, the basis of um, you know, quality care doesn't mean it has to be expensive. Quality care could mean timely diagnosis, timely treatments. Um, so we need to also look at it. You know, I think for the provider's point of view, a lot of the providers are thinking that um, because this is too general. But actually, this City Cancer Challenge is all about the providers too. Because the providers are providing treatments. How do we improve our care? Do we have protocols that we follow? Are we adhering to clinical practice guidelines? So these are all issues that I think as providers, we need to be aware and to think that this TT Cancer Challenge is actually helping this process to make it more uh, accessible for people. Because maybe if you're treated in a small hospital compared to one with oncology support, it's going to be quite different. So how do we ensure that wherever you go in Malaysia, or maybe now we're talking about Greater Petaling City, you will receive essential quality cancer care. So that I think that's from the perspective of the provider. From the public health provide, uh, from the public health perspective, I think Dr. Peso mentioned a lot just now. From the CSO, uh, Dr. Murali mentioned quite a lot. So I think if we were to get this done, this framework would be as all of you mentioned, is going to be something like a framework for national cancer control. And uh, I, I am so happy that we were chosen. It wasn't easy to be chosen because you need to have everybody's support. And I think Ministry of Health, the DG, was very forthcoming even at the beginning. So maybe I would like to, uh, there's no more questions. I, I, I can't see if there's any questions. A lot That's another of question. forget questions as their own advocate too. Your opinion here, please. Okay, so people are talking about patient as the voice of patient. Are we listening to them? So maybe we'll let uh, Murali answer this because I think the, a lot of the patients are actually running National Cancer Society of Malaysia, right? Murali? Hi, Prof. Uh, sorry, I was just uh, typing to doctor actually. But yeah, uh, sure. Um, actually, uh, what we are uh, uh, ensuring is that every single patient group is engaged. So this is not... Uh, uh, kind of a big uh, big picture where it's just uh, 
big players and, and none of the smaller patient groups or even individual support groups. So even at individual support group level, we're making sure that patients are engaged uh, and so that they're brought in together as well. So that, that that's kind of uh, our modus operandi. Uh, Professor, if I may, okay, just I to, think... add, to add to that. Uh, I think Prof, uh, Prof Chan, uh, I think you're asking a very good question there. Um, advocacy. Um, advocacy work is, uh, for me, something that needs to be further developed in the country. Uh, advocacy occurs at many levels, uh, individual, organization, within government, between civil society and government. Um, for this, we need to look at the country as a whole. Um, we don't really involve civil society in policy making. I'm not just saying MOH, I'm just saying the government as a whole. If you compare, for example, Taiwan, for example, Taiwan is much more advanced to us. They even have platforms for policy making within the government to involve the young people, the youth. And these are official platforms, regular platforms set up. It's not ad hoc. Um, we, we, don't, we, we, are, we have not reached that level yet. And we talk about advocacy. I would say the people, the civil society within cancer has quite a, quite a loud voice. Um, Prof. Aisha just published something in the star. Um, was it just yesterday? Yeah. Um, so that's one way of advocacy, uh, raising the point about why is cancer patients not listed within the list of um, um, recipients for the um, phase two of the COVID-19 vaccination. Um, it is, it's just not stated there. And for me, that's just bad risk communication from MOH part, but that's a separate view, separate point. So we need, we need more people to talk about this. Um, advocacy is a skill set that has to be learned. It is not, um, it's like leadership. Okay, some people are good advocates, you know, like some people are good leaders, but leadership skills can be learned as well. And for me, it is something that we need to develop for the civil society. Uh, civil society in Malaysia needs to be developed in a more systematic manner. You, do not, you don't need to be a health-related NGO to talk about health. Very much like you don't have to be a doctor or healthcare provider to talk about health. You know what I mean? Healthy living. Each of us can be an advocate for healthy living at individual level and at organizational level. But we are still a long way from, um, from that yet because it has to look at the bigger picture of the Malaysian, the way um, the government. So it is advocate is very important. Patient advocates are very important. And of course, as healthcare providers here, professionals, we need to start listening. Lah. People talk also, no one listen also problem, right? Like we as doctors complain, right? We talk patient don't listen to us. It's likewise as well. Kan, um, patient talk also we don't listen. So don't ingat kita cakap orang tak dengar lah. Sama je, kita pun tak dengar orang lain cakap. I'll pass back to you, Asha. Okay, I, I think we are almost running out of time. Two more minutes, okay. So let's go around the table just to say your wants. Okay, because I, I think what we want to do is to engage everybody. So let's start with the city manager, Nolin. What are your wants for City Cancer Challenge to move quickly in these two years? I would like to have um, the participation of everybody and uh, because this is the good chance for us to uh, move forward in cancer care. Okay, Faisal. Half a second. Faisal, any, any last comment? Two second comment? Uh, no, no, I've spoken enough. Thank you. Okay, enough. Okay, Burali. Burali, any uh, last comment? Um, let's work together. Let's start. Yeah, I agree. So I think we all can work together and you all actually have a role in this. So please contact us if you think you would like to contribute to the CT Cancer Challenge. There's a lot of openings. We need technical experts. We need people to help us with the surveys please contact us. I think we've left uh, Nolin's uh, email earlier. Please contact us if you need more information. So with that, I think, uh, Suniza, will you be closing the session? Yes, Prof. Okay. All right, Suniza, yeah. we will pass it to you, okay? Thank you very much, Prof, and to all the speakers uh, with a great and outstanding uh, discussion. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the end of our webinar. We hope it was most insightful and interesting. We would like to thank our panel of speakers for being part of our webinar and sharing their knowledge in their respective fields of expertise with regards to City Cancer Challenge. 
Our webinar would not have been a success without the presence of all of you. We thank you for your valuable contributions and active participation throughout the webinar. We would like also to thank all the secretariats and Dr. Shams from the visibility team of Faculty of Medicine for their dedication and hard work in ensuring that our breakfast at FOM webinar live today is a success. Thank you very much. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.